Guys, today I want to see how the Panasonic Lumix S1H does with image stabilization. So I'm really excited about the Panasonic S1H. I'm recording with it right now or I would show it to you. Um, but in the coming months, I'll be putting together a number of small videos, putting it through its paces and culminating with an in-depth review when I feel like I'm qualified to do that. But in this video, all I really wanna look at is image stabilization. To do that, I'm gonna do a bunch of different tests, walking around, uh, comparing it to a control that I'm familiar with, and that's the Fuji X-T3 with various types of stabilization helping it out. We're gonna start basic and slowly introduce more and more stabilization. Now some of you are gonna to wanna to take to the comments and be grumpuses and tell me how stupid I am for comparing the S1H stabilization to the X-T3 and I really look forward to those comments. But if you'd like to save yourself the trouble, I already know it's kinda of ridiculous to compare them. I'm not really comparing them. I'm just having another one be a control and I'm gonna put the X-T3 on a gimbal towards the end. And yes, I know the X-H1 would have been a better comparison, but I don't have that camera, so sorry. Anyway, enough of that. Before I dive into the actual footage, um, I'm just gonna put on the screen the settings, the differences between settings that I'm gonna be using in case you're interested between the two cameras because I always get people asking. So pause the video if you want. Here's the settings. For our first test, I've got both cameras rigged up together so I can get equivalent handheld shots. The X-T3 has a stabilized lens, the 18 to 55 variable aperture lens, which I already know does a fairly decent job at stabilization. But for the S1H, I've got the lens stabilization off with the in-body stabilization on. I really wish I could compare these two lenses alone, but you can't actually turn IBIS off on the Panasonic devices if you have a stabilized lens on the camera. Bear in mind also both benefit from having a wide grip. As we know, the wider we can get handheld, the more stable things will be. For these super amazingly scientific tests, I wanted to walk backwards and to get my dog to follow me, so I suspended a little doggy treat here in front of me in hopes that it would keep him interested. Turns out he wasn't really all that interested. Finally, after learning that he's a smart dog and doesn't like to be patronized and will follow me just fine if I asked him to, we got to work. By the way, walking backward is not an optimal way to walk when trying to get stabilized footage. I know this, but I heard this is actually how the Japanese camera makers do image stabilization tests in their labs. Only not with dogs, they use red pandas. Surprisingly, the footage looks actually pretty similar. I expected the S1H to kill the X-T3, but that 18-55 OIS lens on the X-T3 seems to do all right. And BB did a great job, so he gets a treat and seems to have forgiven me for my earlier bad idea. Next, we're gonna enable the lens stabilization on the S1H and the X-T3 will stay the same with lens stabilization. Here's where we see the S1H really start to flex its muscles with that dual stabilization, but really I expected a bigger difference here. Now we're gonna keep IBIS on, the lens stabilization on, but also enable the ever controversial electronic stabilization on the S1H. Fuji will continue cursing the day I sold my X-H1. Two things surprised me here. I expected the electronic image stabilization to give more warping, and I also expected to see more of a difference. But I think the electronic image stabilization augmentation is subtle, which I actually am really glad about. Okay, that was really fun and interesting, but I feel we've been super unfair to our X-T3 friend, so let's give him an advantage. For this test, the X-T3 is gonna say hello to my little friend, the really excellent Feiyu Tech AK7000 gimbal. 
For the S1H, I'm going to start this comparison by disabling electronic image stabilization and see how it fares. For me, this really is the most important part of the test. I really want to see if I can take that S1H to events and have it replace my gimbal. If the S1H can get near gimbal territory whilst handheld, that's really going to open things up for hybrid shooters and it's really something worth getting excited about. So let's see how they do. And as expected, you do see more camera shake in that S1H from all that backward walking jostling I'm doing. The gimbal glide smoothly but still the S1H is not a slouch here and I'm actually very encouraged seeing how well it did. So let's push things a bit further and see how the S1H does with electronic image stabilization turned on. And here we do indeed see some of the rougher edges get smoothed out and I'll be darned if that S1H doesn't start to really compete with that gimbaled up X-T3. So there you have it, immutable scientific proof that the S1H is a gimbal slayer. Okay, maybe not scientific, but the data is encouraging and certainly enough evidence for me to be willing to take this to my next event alone and leave the gimbal behind. I'll be sure to share with you those results, but in the meantime, remember, kindness before cameras. We'll talk to you again real soon.